SUV or minivan? That's the question. This is the all-new Toyota Sienna hybrid only based on the Highlander hybrid. And we're going to find out how they differ. So Andrea, what do we have to put it in? We got to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit the notification bell, we would really love it. It really helps support the channel. Instagram, Andrea, and you're going to want to follow Andrea. In a moment, you'll find out why is Motormouth underscore Andrea. And from me, it's Motormouth underscore Auto. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Okay, Andrea, Toyota is trying really hard to take SUV elements mm -hmm. and put them in a minivan to get people to buy this because everybody's SUV crazy. Yeah. Do you think it looks kind of like an SUV on the outside? Well, I got to give Toyota props. It's much better. It wasn't what I expected. It's got kind of a boxy back end to it. And the front grille is pretty solid, you it's know, big, it's, it's, it's a big grille. But I still got to say when I walk by it, it's still a minivan, but better. You know what, there's only so much lipstick you can put on a pig, Andrea. <laughs> yes. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, you can only put so much on a box. That's really what this is. And uh, they're trying to take elements of the Highlander hybrid that this is based on yeah. and, and put it on the outside. But the inside is a real kind of departure. This is called the bridge console in the center here between the two front seats. What do you think of this? It's a big improvement, isn't it? I think it looks really sharp. And do you know what I like the most is the shifter. Yeah. It's not a stick shifter like you see in typical minivans. Yeah, and, and this is based on the Highlander Hybrid. We're going to talk about both vehicles a lot because they, they're running on the same platform. I like this better than the Highlander Hybrid. I think this looks more modern, more upscale. I think they should take this and put it in the Highlander Hybrid. I think it looks better. It looks really good. It's sharp and there is just so much storage here in the center console. I mean, look, my purse is under here. It's a huge space with this floating console. Put your hand in there. Put, put all the way down, all the way down. I know, it's okay, huge. Okay, now pull it, pull it out. Put your arm out. That's how long it is. And you've got long arms. And I have that's long how, arms. And that's how deep the console is. That's wow. crazy. It's Because I'm never going to be able to capture it with a camera, that's, no. a, that's a good visual display. Yeah. And they've integrated the armrests into this console as well. Now there is a negative to this, Andrea. Mm. This bridge console, you cannot get out of the passenger seat and then deal with something in the back and come back in. I know, you're not supposed to, no. but people do it. They do it. Here's the thing, I would rather have this. I would rather have it look more modern and look more like an SUV then have that. You can still get to the third row and walk through from the second row if need be. Get a stop, got to get out. Middle of a snowstorm. You have to get out of a vehicle <laughs> anyway. Some people are going to like this, some people are not. I think it looks way better and I like it better than the Highlander Hybrid. It has a nine inch infotainment screen which looks really good. It's sharp. And look at this steering wheel. It's perforated so you get those extra details but it's also heated and guess what it's standard and uh, it also comes with heated seats yeah but it's it's only half heated the top and the bottom are oh yeah heated. like toyota why do you do that like if you're gonna go and give us a standard heated steering wheel it doesn't matter which trim you get it's only at nine and three yeah and it's not bad on a day like this where it's just above freezing but when it's really really cold I want the whole thing heated. That's kind of like why. Yes, and Toyota has got some beautiful materials in here. There isn't a lot of hard plastic, lots of yeah, it's well done. soft materials. I love the way the door flows into the instrument panel and mm -hmm. then around into the center console. This is really well done. Now, second row seats, a bit of a controversy here mm -hmm. because uh, what do you get and what do you not get? So here's the problem with the second row seats. Maybe not a problem. Maybe it's not a problem. You can't remove the second row seats and it is because there's an airbag in them. Is that a deal breaker? The Honda Odyssey seats can be removed. 
the last Sienna model, yes, they could be removed. So is this something that's really important to people who drive minivans? Well, they have designed them so you can slide them all the way forward. And I emailed um, the PR guy from uh, Toyota Canada asking about this. And the first thing he replied was, but you can still get a four by eight sheet of plywood or drywall in the back when you slide the seats forward. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to Home Depot or wherever, you can get stuff in the back. For your consideration, four categories and four vehicles for you to consider. So the first category we've chosen is hybrid competitor, and there's really only one, and that's the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid, and it starts at roughly $45,000 in Canada. Next category, the closest non-hybrid competitor is the Honda Odyssey, coming in around $45,000. Now the third category is SUV inspired minivan. Toyota's trying to do that with this Sienna, but there's another one I think kind of does it a little bit better, and that's the Kia Sedona, and it starts right around $32,000 in Canada. And the SUV alternative is, well, we kind of know, the Toyota Highlander Hybrid. It comes in at almost $45,000, and this Sienna all-wheel drive is about $42,000. So there are four cars for your consideration. So I want to talk a little bit more about the second row seats. Because you can't remove them, I think they're even more comfortable. They're so plush back there. I can't believe how much you can spread out. And even moving them forward and backwards, there's a huge amount of space. Yeah, it's over like six. the range of motion. And the problem that I have with it is that it's a seven or eight passenger vehicle. But if you wanted to buy this one that we're test driving, the Limited, it becomes a seven passenger Only. vehicle. Yeah. Yes, and so if you have an extended family, maybe live with grandma and grandpa and you've got the kids and you wanna take everybody out and you need eight seats, you're gonna to have to go with a lower trim. And you know, when you look at a minivan compared to an SUV, so we'll compare the Highlander to the Sienna, of course, the third row seat is more comfortable and will fit larger people versus the Highlander. All right, time for coffee. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. How is the power compared to the V6? Would you still prefer the V6 or is the hybrid powertrain good enough? Also, would the power be sufficient with the vehicle fully loaded with passengers and cargo? It's the V6 for me. I just feel like this hybrid engine is working really hard and I'm the only one in the vehicle. We wanted to do a test with our teenagers and all their friends load this up with seven passengers, but because of local COVID constraints, we're only supposed to have our immediate family together. So we passed on that, but we did climb some hills with it. And I just don't think that this is a good match for a minivan. It works in the Highlander Hybrid. I'd take a pass on this one. What trim level would you recommend for best value? There are so many to choose from. Absolutely, there are a lot to choose from. We picked the XLE. It comes with all the standard features that you get in the base model, but you also get the kick sensors for the dual sliding doors and the power lift gate, which I think is important when you've got a family. For me, a minivan is about getting the basics covered and nothing more. I don't believe in spending a ton of money on a minivan. So the sliding doors and the power doors and the heated front seats and away you go. For women drivers, which vehicle would be beneficial to them? The Highlander Hybrid or the Sienna Hybrid? I think it really depends on how big your family is. Obviously, for ease of use, this Sienna is fantastic. It sits lower to the ground, and getting kids in and out with car seats is quite easy. It's the best family vehicle on the road, period. And this one's now got a hybrid, so all you can do is try it out. So if you want to get a question in one of our future videos, you need to follow Andrea on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea, and she posts a question every single week for question, coffee, and cars. Cheers. There's the music. It's time for nightlife. So we're going to do a hill test because we're not loaded with cargo or teenage boys. And guess what? We bought a performance computer. So we're going to be 
more accurate. Here now. we go. Are you ready for all the power? I'm ready. Okay, three, Let's do two, it. one, and go. Ooh, Ooh. I felt the front wheels chirp a little. She's okay, noisy. can you hear the engine? Come on, you can do it. Does it there feel? We, go. we did it. Ah, she's a noisy. She's a noisy. Let's see what the number is. Can you look at the bottom there? 11.42 from zero to 100 kilometers an hour. That's not setting the world on fire, Andrea. No, but it is a hybrid. But it, it, I mean, we don't have six or seven people in here. No, could you imagine if we were and filled luggage. on a road trip with luggage? Going up a mountain. You it's... definitely hear it working pretty hard. <laughs> And I didn't feel it with the Highlander Hybrid or the RAV4. When we had the Prime, we went up a mountain, so you could hear the engine working a little bit harder. And when we drove the Highlander Hybrid, we actually pointed out that it wasn't hard work to drive it. In fact, here's a clip from that review. Much better. It handles better. Um, it takes corners with ease. It's quite a comfortable drive and plenty of power. The torque, you can feel the torque. I think most people want to know which one we would choose, the yeah. gas or the hybrid version of the Highlander. So in three, two, one, you say which one you'd pick. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one, hybrid. hybrid. So Andrea, we were quite clear in our Highlander Hybrid that we preferred it over the regular gasoline version. Not so much with this one. What's the power? It's the same, right? It's 245 horsepower and 263 pound-feet of torque, but it just doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like the Highlander. You know what? I dug around trying to find the vehicle weight difference between the two of them, and I found conflicting numbers mm. from the Canadian and U.S. specifications. The best I could figure out is about 300 pounds heavier to get the Sienna minivan versus the Highlander. And 300 pounds of weight is a lot, but they have the same fuel economy, right? I know, so that's the part that's a little bit tricky. How do you have the exact same fuel economy as the Highlander hybrid, but it weighs more? Yeah, I, and I think they've taken it out of performance. What is the fuel economy number? 6.5 for front wheel drive and 6.7 combined for all wheel drive. You know, those are really fantastic fuel economy numbers, mm -hmm. but you give something up to get it. With the Highlander Hybrid, we didn't feel like we were giving something up. One thing I can say about this vehicle is that it handles really well. It's easy to drive. It takes corners with ease. The turning radius is excellent for such a large vehicle. It's time for price pause. The LE front wheel drive starts at almost $40,000. That's $840 more than the 2020 model. XLE front wheel drive, $42,990. The Limited, which we are test driving, is $56,190. The XSE front wheel drive is almost $46,000. And then there's an XSE technology package, which is $5,500 more than the XSE. Now, if you want all wheel drive and every trim is available with all wheel drive, and that's one of the selling features of Sienna, you add $2,000 more to each and every trim. So here are the key standard features that you should look out for. Power dual sliding doors, three zone automatic climate control, heated front seats, leather wrapped and heated steering wheel, a nine inch display infotainment center, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, blind spot monitor system with rear cross traffic alert, LED headlights and LED tail and stop lights. All of those features are standard equipment. Can I rant now? You can rant. Okay, I am not a fan at all of buying high-end minivans. Mm -hmm. I look at these things as a box on wheels to move snotty-nosed kids around, take them to soccer and ballet and hockey and football practice. That's what these are used for. I'm a true believer in get the basics covered. So for us, it's the XLE with the power doors. Mm -hmm. um, and. That's really all, in my opinion, you should spend your money on. Spending fifty-five and sixty thousand dollars to get, uh, you know, more accoutrements on the inside. I don't think there's value in that because the engine's the same, the platform's the same. It doesn't handle any better. Like with some other cars, you spend more money, you get mm -hmm. a better engine, mm -hmm. you get a better suspension, you get all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Not with the minivan. It's still a box on wheels. Buy the cheapest box on wheels you can. So the other side of that is that you have only one vehicle. It has to be a minivan. 
minivan because of the size of your family and you want a little extra luxury. So that's why you pay more. And guess what? Toyota tells us that people who buy the Sienna minivan are 37 years old and have a household income of $140,000. Yeah, so so you can probably buy the extra luxury. So it's an interesting move for Toyota making this minivan a hybrid. Yeah, going with a four-cylinder hybrid too. So you have to drive it, you have to experience it, and it's going to be interesting to see what the public thinks once they get behind the wheel. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.